Welcome learners, we are now still dealing with topic one but moving over to our next section. The next section is quite an important section. I hope that you would spend enough time on it so that you could master it. Topic one, numbers. We are now moving over to the section on manipulation of technical formulae. This is a new section in the level two curriculum it is a very very important section. The techniques that you are going to be learning especially with this subsection is going to help you with all your other technical subjects. A technical formula is simply an equation. Equations you will find them in all engineering subjects. Sometimes or the other you are required to solve for an unknown variable and the variable might be found anywhere in this formula. What this means in order to solve the formula you need to make a certain variable the subject of that formula. It means that you have to isolate that variable on the left hand side of the equation thereby manipulating the formula. The technique that I'm going to be using is not a conventional method. Some lecturers do like it, others opt for an alternative method. As we are going through the lesson, I'm going to try to show you both methods. You can choose whichever one you are more comfortable with, but ensure that you manipulate using the rules. Now the rules that I'm going to be using, especially in this section over here, is to go ahead and try to remove whatever is on the left hand side that I do not need I'm going to move it over to the right hand side. The very very simple rule that I'm going to be using is whenever I move a positive over the equal to sign on the other side of the equation a positive will become a negative. A negative will become a positive. Guys this is the incorrect sign that I'm using it's implying nothing I'm simply using it to tell you that a positive becomes a negative, a negative will become a positive as soon as it hops over the equal to sign. I'll explain in further detail as we go on. Just simply remember a multiplication becomes division or division becomes multiplication. If I have a square root, a square root if I have to move a square root over the equal to sign on the other side of the equation a square root becomes a square. Likewise guys with any other root it could be for example the cube root of something. The cube root when it moves over simply becomes cubed. So a cube root will move over and become cubed. The last one a fraction. If I have a fraction on the left hand side and I'm moving it over to the right hand side the fraction inverts itself. So a half hops over to the other side becomes a 2. Now as I'm going through these examples I will make reference to this over here what I've explained. Let us now go ahead and try to look at how we are going to use those rules in order to simplify an example. The question would read make the variable within brackets the subject of the formula. Question number one v is equal to u plus a t. Now these are formulae that will be found in many many engineering subjects. You might not come across them at level two but sooner or later you will be coming across them in other subjects. But nonetheless v is equal to u plus a t. The question requires us to manipulate 4a which means I need to have the formula as a is equal to whatever. In order for me to simplify this what I will always do is I have the left hand side the equal to sign and the right hand side of an equation. By the way guys this is an equation. The a is on the right hand side I will simply swap them around. Whatever is on this side bring it to the right hand side. Whatever is on the left hand side or sorry on the right hand side bring it over to the left hand side. Meaning 
I have u plus a t is equal to v. It just makes it a bit easier for me to work. I have done nothing as yet, simply swapped the two sides. Now I look onto the left hand side. I am manipulating for a. If I am manipulating for a, I do not want all the other variables. I'm going to start off with what is furthest away from the a. I see over on this side I have the u. The u is being added to the section over here. Basically this here is a positive u. So it's being added. I do not want this so I have to remove it. I take the u and I jump it over to the other side of the equation which means there's the u. I take it and I shove it over to the other side of the equation. What did I say about a positive? A positive becomes a negative. So on my next step, the u is no longer here, it has swapped over. I end up with a t, which is equal to v. This positive u hops over, becomes negative u. And therefore I have a t is equal to v minus u. Then I go further. On the left hand side, I still have a t. I only want a. How is this a and the t combined together? It is multiplied. t is multiplied into a, which means I do not want to see this t over here being multiplied. According to my rule, multiplication must become division. So the t is multiplied on the left, but when it hops over to the right, it needs to be division. So ultimately I see a is equal to and it's no longer here, it's on the right hand side, but it is divided. So the answer is V minus U divided by T. Now this is a simple way to do it, not a problem. Let us consider the alternative method. What I would have had in my second step, step is U plus AT, which is equal to V. Firstly, I do not want to see the U on the left hand side. So I subtract a u from the left hand side. If I subtract a u from the left hand side to balance it, I subtract a u from the right hand side, which ultimately, ultimately means the two u's cancel away. I'm simply left with a t is equal to v minus u. Simple, not a problem. Then I will go here guys and I'll say on the left hand side I do not want to see the t. So I divide the left hand side by t, which means I divide the right hand side also by t. If you notice the t's cancel away, I'm left with a is equal to v minus u divided by t. Exactly the same thing. Now guys, again, whichever method you are more comfortable with. Let's go further. Example number two. p is equal to 4ab over c. The question is simplify for a. Now again, whenever I see any fractional component, I want you to remember one thing, that this in actual fact is p over 1. Because I see this fractional component, always remember we have to use a very very simple rule and we cross multiply. Cross multiply across. 4ab multiplied by 1 is 4ab is equal to p times c which is pc. And now I go ahead and use the simple rules. The simple rules tell me on the left hand side I do not want to see the 4, I do not want to see the b. Which means the 4 and the b is multiplied into a. If it goes over to the other side it needs to come over to the other side and it becomes division. So a is equal to, I see the pc, this 4ab hops over and becomes divided by 4b. And that is the answer. I have manipulated 4a. Now guys, just to go into that example a bit more, at the step here, if I dealt with 4ab, which is equal to pc, I do not want the 4, I do not want the b. So I divide the left hand side by 4b, which means I divide the right hand side by 4b. The b's cancel away and I'm left with a is equal to pc over 4b. Right, any which way? 
provided that you get it correct. Example number three. Example number three, the question here tells me to manipulate for Q. In order to manipulate for Q, my first step obviously, I'll take this to the left hand side, I'll make this the right hand side. Just a bit more easier for me to work with. So I know I will start getting rid of the variables on the left hand side. First step, the 4 and the pi. 4 times pi times q squared, which means the first thing that I have to get rid of is the 4 pi. The 4 pi is multiplied into q squared, which means this multiplication of 4 pi, if I take it over to the other side, multiplication becomes division. So I go over to the other side and I say q squared is equal to b, come guys, divided by 4 pi. 100% correct. Then my next step is, once I come to the stage here, I do not solve, or I am not asked to solve for Q squared. I need to solve for Q. According to my rule, a square becomes a square root. A square root becomes a square. So in a nutshell, the 2 simply goes away from here. It becomes a square root on the other side. So Q is equal to plus minus the square root of b over 4 pi. The only thing that I had added in here was the square root. Square converts itself to a square root. Now guys, I put the plus and the minus here because obviously 3 squared is 9, minus 3 squared is also 9. So please get into the habit of putting the plus minus in terms of converting the square into a square root. This is Q being manipulated. Now let's go further. What if I have to take this from this step forward and say 4 pi q squared. 4 pi q squared is equal to b. On the left hand side I don't want the 4 and the pi so I divide the left hand side by 4 pi. The right hand side I do the exact same thing to balance divided by 4 pi. The 4 pi's cancel away. I'm left here with q squared is equal to b over 4 pi. How's that, guys? In order to get rid of the square here, I square root the left-hand side. If I square root the left-hand side, I square root the right-hand side. That cancels off with that. I'm left here with q is equal to, and I know this needs to be plus minus, the square root of b over 4 pi. And that becomes the solution. How's that, guys? Clear? Simple enough. Let's go to the next example. In most cases, we would have to find the value of an unknown in an equation. Now, this is a practical approach to manipulation of formula. We don't just manipulate because we need to manipulate in a practical sense. We have to first manipulate and then solve for an unknown variable. This is called substitution into the formulae. Question. Given A is equal to L times B, determine the value of L if A is equal to 140 and B is equal to 10. A caution. Normally in a vocational subject, you might want to go and substitute values into the equation and then start manipulating. Sometimes it is much easier to do it that way. But in mathematics, the question will stipulate that you need to manipulate for a variable first. The second part of the question will go ahead and ask you to solve for an actual value. So nonetheless, you would have to know how to manipulate variables. A is equal to L times B. Simple formula. For the moment, I'm not interested in what A is, what L is, what B is, even though you might know it. If I'm going to solve for L, I swap them around. L times B is equal to A. And obviously, L is equal to A divided by B. Again, guys, any which way that you want to do it, I'm happy with that. Once I end up with this stage, the second part of the question, determine the value of L if A is equal to 140, if B is equal to 10.
it means that I have to substitute a and b and end up with a value of L. And L is equal to 14. At this point, they have not given me any units, so L is simply equal to 14. B, got it. If units are being given, your answer should be in a certain unit. If no units, you do not insert any units here. Let's go to another example. Example number 5. Given S is equal to 2AB over C plus 2, make B the subject of the formula, and hence, watch this word here, hence. Now some of you come across that word there, you don't know what it means, hence. Hence means, after you have done the first part, use the first part to solve the second part. S is equal to 2AB over C plus 2. I need to make B the subject of the formula. This is an, a fraction. Straight away, I must put that as S over 1. And I've done that for you. 2AB over C plus 2 is equal to S over 1. My next step, the rule I have given you earlier, I need to cross multiply. Keep in mind that I'm making B the subject of the formula. So 2AB multiplied by 1 is equal to 2AB. S multiplied by C plus 2 is S into C plus 2. I don't need to work this out because I am manipulating for B. According to your rule, there's a 2A that I don't need. I divide this side by 2A, which means I divide the right-hand side by 2A, or I simply move 2A to the right-hand side and it becomes division. Now this guys is a simple process that I'm using. I have now manipulated for B. Let's go further. Once I've manipulated for B, do I leave it like this? No. I am required now to go ahead and solve for B. I know the value of S, which is 20. The value for C is 4. And the value for A is 10. Remember your board mass, guys, or simply use a calculator at this stage. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times 20 is 120. 120 divided by 20 gives me an answer of 6. 6 what? There's no units being given, so it simply reads as B is equal to 6. Guys, how's that going? Are we fine? Perfect. Again, we are not enforcing the way that you actually do this. But step by step will get you to the answer. Do not rush step, guys. Rushing, and that's where you're going to be making errors. Activity 1. As with normal, guys, activity 1. Make the variable within brackets the subject of the formula. Or the formula. You have more than 10 examples. So first, I will require you to copy the first 10 examples. You can press pause right now. There's examples 11 to 18. Please take note that your brackets, these brackets, is what you are basically manipulating for. And while you are at this, guys, I want you to take note of the actual formulae that is being given. You would notice these are very, very applicable formulae. You will be coming across them in the level 2 curriculum. Okay guys, as normal, please conclude the activity and then go to the answer section. Now before we do that guys, just as something just